Welcome to this tutorial on hypotheses. This is Dr. Amanda Rockinson ZapQ. In this tutorial, we're going to define what a hypothesis is. We're going to discuss the purpose of a hypothesis and examine different types of hypotheses so that you can write your hypotheses for your quantitative research proposal. Let's begin by defining a hypothesis. Warner says a hypothesis is an educated guess. A hypothesis is a statement about what you as the researcher expect to occur in your experiment or observation based on your previous research or based on theory. When you include hypotheses in your research proposal, you demonstrate to your reader that you have a good understanding of the literature and theory. That is, if your hypotheses are derived from the literature and theory. A hypothesis also serves another function. It provides a framework for you to collect, analyze, interpret, and report data. For the primary function of a hypothesis, and more specifically a null hypothesis in research, is to test it. You collect data and then you analyze it using some type of statistical analysis or procedure. The results of that analysis help you to decide whether or not you reject or fail to reject, note that I didn't say accept, you reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, thus supporting or refuting theoretical and empirical inferences. I will also make this one other note as we're talking about testing the null hypothesis. A hypothesis is only tested using inferential statistics and not descriptive statistics. Now that you understand the definition of a hypothesis and the function that hypotheses serve, let's talk about the different types of hypotheses you need to write for each one of your research question. For each of your well-formulated research questions, you need to write at least one null hypothesis and in some cases an alternative hypothesis. Let me talk a little bit about what I mean. Most journals, faculty members, universities require that every research question has a stated null hypothesis, especially in a research proposal. However, alternative hypotheses are sometimes, um, sometimes not required, sometimes they're optional. But you need to know that every research question has at least one null hypothesis and one alternative hypothesis. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what these two types of hypotheses are. Let's start with the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis simply states that there is no significant or statistically significant difference or association between the variables. It's usually stated in terms such as there's no statistically significant effect, there's no statistically significant difference, or there's no statistically significant relationship. It can also be written using symbols, as you can see here on this slide, but for most educational so social science types of research, usually the null hypothesis is written in words. So let's apply this information to an example. Let's say that a researcher poses the question, what is the effect of the Math 2.0 gamification app on second grade students' attitudes toward math? The corresponding null hypothesis could be there is, that the Math 2.0 gamification app, when compared to traditional math instruction, has no statistically significant effect on second grade students' attitudes toward math. So the null hypothesis states that there is no statistically significant effect, difference, or relationship. Then there is the alternative or research hypothesis. This is a statement about what is expected in the research. And an alternative or research hypothesis can either be directional or non-directional. Let's talk about the non-directional research hypothesis first. The non-directional research hypothesis does not specify the direction of the expected relationship. So when you go to test the null hypothesis, using a statistical analysis, you test to see if the means between the two groups are greater than or less than. So you're not stating that it will be greater than or less than. You are looking at if it's either or because the non-directional 
research hypothesis does not specify direction. So an example of a non-directional research hypothesis might be that the Math 2.0 gamification app will have a statistically significant effect on second grade students' attitudes toward math. Then there is the directional research hypothesis. The directional research hypothesis specifies that there is a direction um, that should happen, that the, there's a direction of an expected relationship. So when you go to test the null hypothesis using a statistical analysis, you only look for a difference either less than or greater than. So normally when a research hypothesis is directional, you'll see words or use words such as increase, decrease, positive relationship, or negative relationship. An example of a directional hypothesis is that second grade students who participate in the Math 2.0 gamification app will have a statistically significantly higher mean score on the attitudes toward math assessment when compared to second grade students who participate in a traditional math class. Let me really quickly note here too, because I, I want to make sure that I clarified this, that a directional hy research hypothesis is, requires a one-tailed statistical analysis, that's why you see one tail in parentheses. A non-directional requires a two-tailed statistical analysis. And so when we talk a little bit more about analysis in later tutorials and lessons, um, just remember that because we'll come back and we'll talk about it. But um, this, is, this definitely demonstrates, remember when I said that a function of a hypothesis is to provide a framework and direction for collecting and analyzing data? If you, and this is, this is just one example, if you propose a directional research hypothesis, that directs the type of analysis you're doing. So I just wanted to take a moment and point that out. I also want to take another moment and mention another caveat that has to do with directional versus non-directional research hypotheses. A directional hypothesis should only be posed if there's strong empirical and theoretical support. Because remember, a directional hypothesis determines the type of analysis you do. And if you do a one-tailed test only looking for an increase or a higher mean score or a positive relationship, that means you put all your eggs in one basket and you're only looking for that positive effect and you're not looking for the negative effect. And if for some reason there was a negative effect, you would miss that. So it's really, really important that there is strong, strong, superical and theoretical support when you pose a directional hypothesis. So now you understand what a hypothesis is, you understand the purpose and function of the null hypothesis and the research hypothesis, and you understand that there are two different types of hypotheses. There's alternative or research hypotheses and null hypotheses, and it's the null hypothesis that you test whenever you collect your data and run your statistical analysis. You understand that every research question has at least one null and one research or alternative hypothesis. You almost always, for every assignment at every university, for every professor, need to state the null hypothesis. Sometimes you need to state the research hypothesis. And you'll learn in a little bit that research questions sometimes don't just have one null hypothesis or one research hypothesis, but it has multiple. However, with this information, go ahead and take a stab at looking at each of your research questions and propose a null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for each.